good Wednesday evening to you. This is Pastor Jones here at Valley Assembly of God, Hagerstown, Michigan. Yeah, Hagerstown, Michigan. Hagerstown, Maryland. I'm still uh, uh, staggering from uh, some of the weather we've had. Uh, we welcome you th this evening, and we pray that you have brought your uh, Bibles in hand and that uh, we're going to have a good study tonight. Once again, I remind you in this study of the Christian worker, this is not milk. This is some meat. And uh, I hope that you uh, jot some scriptures down and you think about these things that are said uh, and that you're going to grow thereby in the good things of God. Uh, we uh, want to pick up where we left off last week, and I'm going to be reading in Philippians 4, uh, f uh, 6 and 7 as we get started. And the first thing we're going to talk about is growing in him and seeing his keeping power. God keeps us, and we want to see the power that he exercises in doing so. Let's pray before we get into it uh, tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this time and opportunity to break the bread of life. We ask that, Lord, the word will leap from the page, that you will, Lord, uh, inundate us with this spiritual truths, and that, God, we will grow thereby. Anoint, Lord, your messenger, and God bless and minister to every heart in life. Now we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, In nothing be anxious, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. What did Jesus say? He said, Consider the lilies. How they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. They're not worrying. Because the Creator, our Heavenly Father, takes care of them. He meets the need. Instead of trusting the Lord, we're too busy sometimes worrying and looking to ourselves, seeing if we're growing. And you know what? As you try to watch yourself to see if you're growing, Nothing is accomplished. It is a big mistake uh, in relationship to our growth in grace. My friends tonight, there will be no progress all the while we're doing that. A boy or a girl, for that fact, does not try to grow. They just eat, they sleep, they work, they, they play. All the while, they are growing and ministering to their growth by doing so although they are unconscious of that growth. You've seen it so many times with your children, your grandchildren. It seems like they're not growing. They're always on your blink and they've grown six inches. <laughs> they just jump up overnight. Well, that's the way it is spiritually as well. If we have a knowledge of Christ's keeping power, there must be on our part a perfect trust in his perfect keeping power. And as a natural consequence, we will enjoy perfect peace. And boy, do we need peace right now in the midst of what we are going through. An old man once said, I do the trusting and he does the keeping. And folks, that has not changed. That's still the same today. A little girl one day was asked by a lady whether she knew Christ as her Lord and Savior. She said yes. And then the lady went on to tell her it was her privilege to take all her troubles and trials to Christ. And the young lady replied, I do so, and more than that, I leave them with him. How many times have you come to an altar, gone to your prayer closet, poured out your heart to God, gave something to the Lord that was burdening you, and then as you get up, you pick it up and take it with you. Leave it with Christ. Leave it with my Lord. There was a young man one time walking down the road with a backpack on his pack. A cart came by, horse-driven. The man says, come on, jump up in the cart. I'll give you a ride into town. When the boy got up, he kept his backpack on his back. The man says, take your pack off and lay it in the cart. Says, oh, no, sir. You, you, you blessed me enough just by giving me a ride. I, I won't put my, my uh, backpack in your cart. Now, we smile when we think about that, but how many times is that the way with the believer? We often carry a pack of troubles and fears, a pack of uh, doubts and care with all the time the Lord is saying roll your burden on me roll yourself on me roll your way on me roll your works on me 
Oh, that we would commit ourselves unreservedly into the hands of the Lord, like the one young man said when he was asked if he had a soul. He, and, and he responded, no. Well, the minister that was talking to him felt that maybe he was being influenced by some infidel notions and began to question the boy. And the boy says, look it, I did have a soul the other day, but I gave it to the Lord and now he's got it. A committing ourselves into the keeping hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we see growing in him and having everything supplied that we have need of. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus our Lord, Philippians 4 and 19. God does not promise to give us all that we want, but he does promise to supply all our need. If a child wants a knife, the parent may say no because they're afraid the child will cut themselves. How many times have we asked something of God? He's had to say no. You know why? Because he knew that if he granted that to us, we might do harm to ourselves. How many times have you considered the things you've asked for from God in years past that God said no, and now you look over your shoulder and you say, thank God the Lord didn't answer that prayer. Thank God the Lord didn't give me that which I asked for. It would have done me great harm. That's because God is so much wiser than you and I and knows exactly what we have need of. My friends, the measure or the standard of blessing is not according to our need or asking, but according to the riches of his glory. There's not anything that you have need of that God is not able to meet that need if you just let go and let God. And then we see growing in him and seeing our standing in him and our relationship one to another. Philippians 4 again, the 21st verse, salute every saint in Christ Jesus. God already sees us in heaven and the person of his son. But there's another side we are apt to forget, and that is that all believers in Christ have the same standing. Nobody's ahead of the other person. And we should recognize that not only our oneness in him, but our oneness with each other. We are interly connected to one another in the body of Christ as we embrace Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. What bickering and jealousy believers could be saved from if they would only realize that. The success or failure of one brother or one sister is our success or our failure. Thus the success of one is the success of all and vice versa. And then we see thirdly in this category of which we've been going down, outward growth and blessing to others. You remember the song we used to sing, Make Me a Blessing? That is God's intention for you and I to be a blessing to other people, to be a blessing to God's church, a blessing to the work of the Lord. If we look up the following scriptures in connection with the word abounding, we find that we may grow outwardly in blessing to other people and how it's done. Abounding in fruit bearing, Philippians 4, 17, that others may see the evidence of life in us, evidence that's so needed. Where's the evidence that you really have the goods in God. Abounding in love, Philippians 1, 9, that others may see the truth of, of the master's words, by the show all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one towards another. Abounding in contentment, Philippians, the fourth chapter, 12th and 18th verse, that others may see the spirit of the master manifested by us. Abounding in thanksgiving, Colossians 2, 7, that others may glorify God in our behalf as they see his grace working in us. Isn't it a delight to see God's grace working in an individual? They're not the man or the woman they used to be. Now they're a product of God's touch in and upon their life. Abounding and ministering to the needs of other people. 2 Corinthians 8, 7 and 8, that others may see that we love not only in word, but deed. We, we show people by our actions our love. Abounding in thanksgiving, Colossians 2, 7. That others might see that grace of God working in us and raise their hands and give God praise and glory for that good work. Abounding in suffering, 
for and with Christ, 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 5, that others may see the patient and love of Christ manifested by us according in work for and with Christ, or not according, abounding in work for and with Christ, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, that others may be blessed. It's not just for me to get blessed. It's for others in turn to be blessed by my life and my ministry and, and the things that I do. It is this last verse we want to confine ourselves to for just a moment. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And in this verse, we briefly notice seven things. Mark them, please. First of all, a plea for steadfastness. Do we not find the plea, the reason for steadfastness, as expressed in the word, therefore, for it brings before us the truths enumerated in 1 Corinthians 15, for it we see the death of Christ, his resurrection, his glorious victory over death, his coming glory, which we shall share with him, the first fruits which he has become, and the certainty that we shall triumph over all our foes. What Jesus started, praise God, he has and will complete. Secondly, a firm stand, unmovable. Boy, we need that in the body of Christ today. Unmovable. Standing on resurrection ground. Keeping our position because we are kept by the power of God through faith. Not, not chameleons that change with everybody that we are around. Not people that float around and jump from church to church. But we are unmovable. Thirdly, a persevering effort. Always abounding. Not working by fits and starts. Up and down, back and forth but in prayerful believing, loving, persevering effort, and also abounding therein. And fourthly, an important reminder. It's in the work of the Lord. We are to see that our work is in the Lord, for the Lord, and with the Lord, and not for glory of self, or to bring honor to a particular group, a particular denomination, a particular church. It's to bring glory to God. And fifthly, a blessed assurance. For as much as we know, whatever we do for him does not escape his notice. And although it's only a cup of water, we'll not re lose our reward. Do you know God keeps good books? He sees everything that you do. Every effort that you exert to forward his kingdom and to be a blessing. And one day we'll be rewarded accordingly. Sixthly, an encouragement, labor. Labor, he says. Not play, hard work. Oh my goodness, that's a bad word in some people's lives. They don't want to work hard. But it is hard work laboring for the Lord. And it's demanded of you and I as believers. It's not easy because it's in and with him who loved us and gave himself for us. And seventh, a sure reward. Whatever we're doing is not in vain, Paul says here. Working for Christ on such lines, in such a manner, and with such ends, it can never miss its reward. Thus seeking to be used by the Lord in blessing to others, we ourselves are going to grow in grace and become more Christ-like, for it is said of him, he went about doing good. Number two is this. A growth in knowledge. Mere head knowledge puffs up. But growing and holding on to the truth in love, it builds up. And if we remember that the object of all true knowledge is that we become more Christ-like, the more knowledge, the better. Growing in the knowledge of God as we walk worthy of the Lord, we shall be fruitful in every good work, Colossians 1.10. Growing in the knowledge of Christ, we should become like him in fellowship with him, Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Growing in the knowledge of his will by doing it, Colossians 1, 9, we shall be initiated into his secrets. He'll, 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 he'll speak into things 
and to us the world does not have a grasping of, but growing in the knowledge of his love and communion with him, Ephesians 3 and 19, we shall be satisfied in him. Where is satisfaction today, even in God's people? It's only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Growing in the knowledge of his power by putting him, by trusting him, Philippians 3.10, we shall be equipped for all that comes and whatever comes. Growing in the knowledge of his glory by looking to him, 2 Corinthians 4 and 6, we shall live in the power of the world to come. And growing in the knowledge of his purpose, we are taught by the Spirit through the word, John 16 and 13, we'll know his mind and we'll have fellowship with him as a consequence. And boy, I want to fellowship with Jesus. When I get into the pulpit, whether I'm preaching or teaching, I want the mind of God. When I'm counseling people, I want the mind of God. When I make decisions in life, I want the mind of God. My friends, it's all part of our growth in him. Number three, growing in love, 1 Corinthians 13. We have the character of true love here and what it does. Let our love grow in firmness, rooted and grounded in love. Let it grow in its extent, abounding in love. Let it grow in, in its intensity, constrained by the love of Christ, the Bible says. And let it grow practically. Love not in word, but in deed and in truth. Number four, grow in humility. Notice Paul, growth in humility. At first we find him saying, I am the least of the apostles, 1 Corinthians 15, 9. Then five years, then five years afterwards, he said, I am less than the least of all the saints, Ephesians 3, 8. And just before he's finished his course, he said, I'm the chief of sinners, 1 Timothy 1 and 15. Yea, lower than that was he, for in writing to the Corinthians, he said, though I be nothing, let's remember that while we seek to grow in humility, we must never be proud of humility. Those are the most humble, are those that are unconscious of themselves. And lastly, tonight, growing in faith, 2 Corinthians, or 2 Thessalonians, rather, 1 and 3. Let our faith grow in passiveness by resting only in the Lord. Let it grow in firmness by believing all the word of God. Not some of it, not most of it, all the word. Let's grow in our dependence by trusting in everything to the Lord. Let it grow in consistency constancy by always looking to him the author the finisher of our faith let it grow in its implicity and simplicity by receiving everything from him let it grow in activity that others may be blessed by god's presence in our life let it grow in its extent in other words never be satisfied go on from faith to faith from strength to strength from grace to grace from peace to peace, from joy to joy, from glory to glory, shining more and more unto the perfect day. May the Lord help us as we grow up into all these things. If you don't see that growth, make a pledge to God tonight that from, from this point onward, I am determined to grow in God by embracing the entirety of his word and allowing God to have his way. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. We pray your blessing in the hearts and lives of those that we have ministered to tonight. We pray God help each and every one of us to grow in the grace and knowledge of God. God may it be manifest in such a way that we become a blessing to everybody about us. Father, protect us as we Navigate through the remainder of this week. Prepare us for a great Sunday ahead. And Lord, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice tonight that doesn't know you, may they open their heart's door and let Jesus in. And Father, into, their, into your hands we grant them and commit them and ask you to have your way. Protect us now and keep us, Lord. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining with us tonight. I pray we were a blessing. We're going to wrap up this segment 
next Wednesday night. I hope you don't miss. Why don't you call somebody up and invite them to watch it with you. Let's be used of God collectively together to impact lives, to win souls, to make a difference. Yes, even in this time of pandemic. God bless you. We'll see you soon.